Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips and Heather Marchant here. We're going to talk about super fun stuff today. Boy, get ready. Yeah. Closing statements, <laughs> closing statements. And you know, this yes. is pretty, this is probably pretty good timing, whether you're buying an investment property or you're buying a personal residence, you're going to have one. Sometimes they call them a HUD. Mm -hmm. So HUD or closing statement, either way, it is where every single thing that gets paid or credited shows up. And honestly, I spend more time reviewing that when I am closing myself than just about any other document probably combined. <laughs> yeah. Cause you can actually do something about the stuff on that document. And yes. if, if you don't like your loan docs, it's kind of just tough. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of too late. <laughs> I don't think the bank's really going to change their documents for you. That's, I just don't think it's going to happen. Sometimes on commercial loans, they will a little bit if there's some weird funky crap in there, but then it usually delays closing. But on this document, if it's wrong, if something's not right, they can pretty easily change it. And um, you've got to look because if you don't look, you can be wrong and it'll cost you money. Yeah. And humans prepare them, <laughs> human beings. Yeah. So this isn't computer generated. I think a lot of people assume that it's, it is what it is. And a settlement statement is definitely like you said, Ron, it's changeable until you sign it and close. It's much harder to change mm -hmm. after after you've signed and closed. So a couple of examples um, that I've seen actually very recently in the last couple of weeks, I had a client reach out saying, hey, the tenant didn't pay rent the month that I closed. So the property manager hadn't come to us with that information, probably because they just didn't know, right? That it happened all right at the 11th hour. And I said, well, did you look at your settlement statement? Because there's always prorated rent on your settlement statement and he hadn't look, sent he hadn't sent it to me and he hadn't looked at it and I said that is where you can see hey why isn't there prorated rent on here ask the question and find out wait the tenant didn't pay rent this month like that yeah. that would have been super helpful to know for everybody right um and then another one that I've seen really recently is security deposits title didn't put them on that it was title's job to do that they didn't put it on there and they've said, okay, well, you just handle it outside of closing. You just figure yeah. it out. Yeah, which is which is a lot of fun for everybody involved. A so, lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's 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 more difficult to go back and fix it after everybody's signed and the deal is closed because because it it's all money. So mm -hmm. money has to trade hands, and there's usually a bank involved too. So we got a buyer, a seller, and a bank, and depending on what's screwed up on the HUD, it could affect one or all three parties to the transaction mm -hmm. or there's more parties than that right because the realtor commissions are on there um i mean there's a lot that that's on there yeah. matter of fact i'm getting it i just got a check in the mail today for two dollars and some odd cents for yeah. over over collection of taxes for one of my closings <laughs> big money <laughs> big money but they overcharged me and so they had to send me money back um it almost cost more to mail it to me than the uh, check inside. Right. Anymore. So exactly. But yeah. So anyway, the, the, the front page of, of a HUD has all of the big numbers on there. And then there are certain line items on the front page that are broken down on the second page. So there's usually a line that, that says, you know, something about um, settlement charges and mm -hmm. it's a big fat number. And in order to know what the big fat number is, you have to go to page two where the big fat number is broken down and, um, it's, it's broken down into all kinds of fees. And, uh, you know, some of the things that I think you need to check, and I know Heather's got some other ones too. She's just telling you about a couple, but there's usually a, a section that is really, really fat. And that, that is your prepaids. So, Depending on what your documents say, they could be either under collecting or over collecting on the HUD. What I mean by that is 
if you have if they're if they're going to uh, impound your taxes and your insurance, and they're they're supposed to be collecting a year up front, well then you don't want them collecting a year and a half, and you don't want them collecting six months. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going to be six months. You're going to be underfunded for your escrow account. And if it's over that, then you're just giving them your money up front for them to give it back to you after year one, which is kind of like paying taxes early ahead of time and yeah. getting a refund, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of. Uh, why, why would I want the government to have my money for a little while? I'll just keep it and pay them their, yep. their, their share. Exactly. So same, same thing with your mortgage company. Don't give them more money for your escrow account than is, is required by the documents, right? And your lender should have told you how much that they should be collecting. Um, so those are good things to check. Agreed. A couple of like other mistakes I've seen made, um, prorated rent and security deposits. If there's a tenant in place, that should always be on there. Always. So you just check for that. And like I said, you can, it can trigger other questions. If there's no security deposit and they say, oh yeah, we don't have one. Then you say, wait, 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 how do I not have a security deposit? Right. We've had that happen before. Um, the tenant one doesn't yeah. mean it's not on the lease. And if it's on yeah, the yes. lease and they just don't have one, well, then the seller's got to cough that up because otherwise yep. you've got to cough that up later on down the road. Exactly. So uh, then you have your um, loan costs that I've seen. I've had clients reach out just, just yesterday. A client reached out and said, why do I have such high, um, why am I paying so many points? And I said, well, did you not tell the lender that you wanted to pay that many points? Well, no. And so just stuff like that, like just not being asleep at the wheel. So under loan costs, you have your points at the very top that you're paying if you wanted to you know, buy down the rate. Um, you have loan processing fees and underwriting fees. Pretty typical, right? But just making sure mostly the points that that's what you agreed to. So there wasn't an error that someone yeah, made. And if, you know, if, you're, if, if the seller is paying points, it doesn't mean that they're not gonna show up there. It means that you're gonna have mm -hmm. a credit for closing costs. And the, the credit, yeah. that credit is probably not going to show up as credit for points to buy down your interest rate. It's going to show up as a credit from the seller for closing costs. And it's, yeah. it's just going to be a line item that offsets the points that you're paying to buy down the interest rate. They're still going to be there. And people That's get right. confused by that as well because this, this gets into a little bit of accounting, right? You, you have you know, certain areas that offset other areas and you, know, you got you to know what those are. Where those credits that's a, are. Yeah, that's a really good point because I have clients say, well, why am I paying this? I'm like, oh, well, you see, there's a credit, right? Like it has to be paid by you because you're the borrower on the loan. Yeah, so it has to note, be on your side. Make a note, as Heather said, that if, if you have on your documents that they gave you the security deposit when the tenant moves out, you have to give them back the security deposit and you did get it. It's a line item, but yeah. you didn't get a check. You know, you didn't, you didn't get to hold the money, but it's, it's yep. on the document. And that means you got it as a credit. Um, That's right. Yeah. And some property managers really want to keep that security deposit on their books, which can actually make a lot of sense because they're on the hook to give it back and say you spend the security deposit and then the tenant moves out and they say to the property manager, hey, where's my security deposit? And they're begging the owner to send them the money. That puts them in, an, in a tight spot. <laughs> so that may be, I've seen it happen where you get the credit on the security deposit and then it goes back and then the property manager says, okay, I need that back like right away after closing. Or I've seen it that the if the property manager is gonna be the same property manager who's already managing, that they will just move the security deposit over in your name in their on their books so yeah from the rent. just, we'll just take it yep. and put it over as a security deposit yeah so don't freak out if that happens um just ask the right questions that's all yeah just understand how the money's flowing right they yep. they have to hold a security deposit almost i don't think any of them that we work with heather have the client hold a security deposit so if you get it on the hud yeah. just know they're going to take it they're yeah gonna they're going to ask for it back, back. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be probably on your first rent. It's going to come yep. out, which means you're not going to probably get any, but you did get it. It's on the, you got it in the HUD on the closing yep. statement. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So I don't um, know if we flogged that horse enough, but that's important because no, that's one it's one of the things that people miss most out of everything with, with respect to rental properties, investment properties, they miss that piece. Um, mm -hmm. So I agree. Important. I think the other thing uh, too is make sure that the prorations are right for your taxes. 
Make sure that the seller is paying their share of the taxes. That's really important. Really important. Yeah. True. Um, I've seen it happen on set. Not very often. This isn't. This doesn't happen often. But I've seen it happen where you pay for the appraisal on a credit card, and then it's on the settlement statement as an appraisal charge. So not very common mistake, but still something just to breeze through it, go through every line, and just make sure. Like, wait a minute, did I pay for that already? And I'm being charged again for the appraisal stuff like that. And then you have your title fees, which are pretty set in stone. There's not a whole lot you can do to affect title fees. I have on a refinance used the same title company and I called that title company and said, Hey, you handled title on when I purchased the property, I'm doing a refinance. And they said, Oh yeah, we'll give you a 40% discount because I asked. So there are, there are like a couple times that you, you can affect title fees, but typically not really <laughs> title fees are the title fees. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now I will say there's not a whole lot, you know, more that can be said about it, about a, a closing statement or a, or a HUD. I mean, there, there's a lot of line items on there, but most of the line items mm -hmm. on there, there's not a whole lot you can do about them. You just, you, they're there. Um, yep. and you, you know, somebody's paying them, just make sure that the right person is paying them yes. according to your contract. Um, you know, that some, somehow the, if you're using a seller's title company, the title company didn't put everything on the on the buyer when that's not what the contract called for, right? Yes. So you just you just have to be um, you have to be aware. You have to be looking for this stuff. Yep. A couple more. I'm just looking at one right now. So a couple more things just to check. Um, you have your homeowner's insurance. You may have a um, home warranty. Make sure that you're not the one paying for that. Typically our sellers are paying for the home warranty. Sometimes you may elect to pay for one. Just checking to make sure that's on the right side of the expenses. Um, and then you have your down at the bottom, you have other charges and you have your HOA and your HOA monthly dues are prorated. Um, they sometimes charge a transfer fee, or I would say usually charge a small transfer fee to move owners over in their records. So just making sure that you're aware, because sometimes I've had clients say, wait a minute, Heather, there's an HOA on this property. Like a year after closing, the seller didn't know about the HOA and they hadn't really looked at their settlement statement and it's on there. It says, no, hey, here's the, your the, HOA information. The house that we just bought, they didn't take the HOA out either. And we, mm. uh, our, our new neighbor is apparently one of the, I don't know if he's the president or, I don't know, anyway, he's on the board. Oh, no. And he came over and he was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know that you're about ready to get a letter that we're, that, you know, the board For payment to, I don't know, some kind of judgment oh my gosh for your hoa fees and i'm like <laughs> oh dude i like yeah i i i thought i thought they were on the hud right i thought they were on the closing statement yeah apparently they weren't on the closing statement and so you know i was about ready to get a really nasty gram from the new hoa that nothing wow. like in the community and being that guy right that guy. Um, we paid those but just make sure because if they're not on there you still owe them and yeah. you know hoas can be they can be pretty aggressive. Yep. And if you don't know that it exists, right? Because if you find out and it wasn't disclosed that there's an HOA, then that's a conversation, right? So just the, the settlement statement can give you lots of information about things like that. So that happened on one, one whole development that the, we didn't know there was an HOA. Yeah. So and sometimes, sometimes the title company screws up and sends you both sides where you get to see the seller and the buyer, mm -hmm. which is not typical. Typically, you only get to see yours. But if that happens, it gives you even more. <laughs> it gives you even yeah. more information <laughs> because it gives you everything that's true. that they're paying and what they're making and everything else. Um, so, I mean, that probably won't happen for you. But, you know, if it does, it's kind of fun sometimes to see the other side. So an another thing that I'll mention also, I feel like I'm on a list here, but you're capped on a conventional loan at 2% of the purchase price in incentives. So a hundred thousand dollar house, you can have no more than $2,000 of like closing costs or any seller incentives to get you to buy the property, right? Put in place, I'm sure to prevent fraud and all sorts of shenanigans, but you, 
it was sometimes on our contracts, we will have 2% closing costs and the seller to pay the property manager a credit at closing. We've done that a couple times and we're doing it a little more frequently right now. That will not be on your settlement statement because that would take the balance over 2%. And where it's prepaying for a property management fee, the lender's okay with it, but it cannot be on the settlement statement. So that has to be handled outside of closing. And we have you know, a team in our office to make sure that happens, but not a bad thing to follow up and say, hey, is that credit at the property management company yet? What's happening, right? Before I sign this, I wanna know a plan. Well, and you know, the other thing is, is that you, you read your statement, you should be able to see it on your statement. Which yep. I guess, you know, a, a HUD is not a whole lot different than your statements. It's just mm -hmm. an accounting of what's happening in the transaction, which is exactly the same thing as your monthly statements are. It's an accounting yeah. of what has happened or transpired during the past month with your property. And so you should read both of those and understand what they are. I don't know if I should even bring this up, Heather. <laughs> I may be jumping in. I may be jumping into something that is way too complex, but I'm now I'm curious because this is fresh in my mind. We just we just um, underwrote a deal that a guy brought us, a uh, multifamily deal, and I I had it looked at the top of the uh, P and L when they sent it over the T12, but my asset manager Erica caught it that they had hmm. sent us over the T12 in accrual instead of cash, and so. I don't, if you don't understand the difference between accrual and cash accounting, cash is what happened this month happened this month and to, to break it down into its simplest form. And then accrual is hey, if, if, if I, if I was supposed to get paid this month, then I'm going to account for it this month, whether it came or it mm -hmm. didn't get, where it didn't come. Right. And the same thing with bills. If it was due this month and I didn't pay it, doesn't matter. I'm putting it in the books, right? Wow. Well, so it's that like can, account that can receivable, cause yeah. problems if you send over an accrual statement. You know, it, it can show on there that there's all of this money that I supposedly generated, but a portion of that money could be bad debt that I actually didn't get the money, never got the money, right? It's just, <laughs> it's still sitting there on the books and during that 12, 12 month period, which can inflate the numbers. And in this case, it did inflate the numbers pretty substantially, actually. And they deflated some of the expenses, some of the utilities and some other expenses because of the same thing. And so <clears throat> when you're getting your statements, it's really important to understand what you're getting. Almost all of you are going to be getting cash. But when you start to get into larger properties, your uh, property management companies may be sending you um, accrual. And huh. if they are, you need to be able to tie out everything. So you need, you need to be able, all the income that supposedly um, you made, you have to actually realize it at some point. And if you don't, it needs to go into bad debt or some, something else so that it comes off of the top line. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to pay taxes on it and you didn't ever get it, right? Oh, um, that's a good one. In addition to that, um, if you're buying properties, you need to make sure that they're not sending you accrual. You need to make sure they're sending you cash so you know what really happened during that year right good one I wasn't going to talk about that but that's that just happened and it completely changed this property into no a, kidding a decently easily property into a crappy i mean it's a really <laughs> crappy property it was really bad <laughs> i mean it's only a hundred thousand dollars off you know so no big deal no biggie um, i mean a hundred thousand dollars just so everybody's aware that's that's in, in this particular market it's about one and a half million dollars worth of purchase price so i mean it's not insignificant. So anyway, that deal is no most likely dead, but it's dead because of accounting. And I, I, we harp on this all the time. You've got to know your numbers. You've got to know your numbers. You've got to know your numbers. And so just kind of going back to what we originally started talking about, you need to know your numbers when you close too. You yeah. Know, you look at this document. It's a pretty important document. So don't just autograph it and send it back. Look at it. Start your yeah. investing career or continue your investing career on the right track by understanding your numbers. And if you don't understand, just ask. It's super yep. easy. Just ask. Somebody knows. Oh, one last one I just thought of that has been missed a couple times. It's mostly when someone sends a check for earnest money, mm. it is missed. And so they you say, wait a minute, I paid earnest money. And they say, no, we never received it. And you say, here's a copy of my check, which is why we ask all of our clients to send us a copy just in case this happens. 
Um, and then they go, oh yeah, never mind. You did pay five thousand dollars, right? So <laughs> never mind. Hey, what's five grand between friends? It's no biggie. <laughs> it's no biggie. So sorry, I, I got us sidetracked for a second, but I thought of it as something no, to mention. A, that's a really, really important one. Um, and you're right that that's one that's overlooked a lot. It's like it's sitting at the at the title company, and for whatever reason, they just didn't they just didn't attach it to the right file. It's just yep. sitting there. And it will that's stay simple. sitting there in limbo for God knows how long if people don't claim it, right? So be sure to look for all that stuff, guys. And it's, I know we just went through a lot of stuff, but you know, your, your deal doesn't have to be, have all of those things, but all of the stuff is in the contract. So mm -hmm. whatever's in the contract needs to, needs to show up on that closing statement. And it's really, I'm going to reiterate that it's really hard to get it after closing. Almost like to the point that we're like, yeah, we don't know if we're going to get this because the seller settled their books, right? They paid their contractors, whatever, everything's settled on their side. And then we're coming back and saying, oh yeah, by the way, uh, <laughs> you, you missed this or yeah. five grand. No, nobody, nobody, nobody wants that to happen after you get, well, you don't, nope, you nope. certainly don't want them with the seller calling back and going, oh. Uh, there was a mistake. Need you to pay an extra five grand. Nobody wants that. Yeah, sellers right? don't nope. want that either, right? So just just check, make sure that you've got this thing nailed. Oh, and we should cover if it's not right, what they should do. So, yeah. I usually reach out to the title company and I say, "Hey, this is missing." <laughs> I was going to say usually only because sometimes my clients reach out to me and I reach out to the title company. But if this is a timeline issue that you are closing like usually you're closing very soon go directly to the title company and say i have a problem and you don't you can send back all of the loan documents the settlement statement does not need to be notarized so that can be handled after you sign everything else just because the settlement statement's wrong does not mean you can't sign everything else sign everything else in the presence of the notary as long as it's accurate send it back and then the settlement statement can be handled the next day so if you're signing in the and, evening and routinely yeah. is actually yes very so, common yep so don't feel like you can't sign a piece of paper because you are missing your security deposit, right? You can move forward and sign everything because if you don't, the documents are date sensitive and they may have to go back to the drawing board and redraw everything, which could incur loan fees, et cetera. So yep. that is, sorry, one thing I want to make sure we talked about. Okay. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. I know it was short, but there's not a whole lot, again. I mean, I'm actually really surprised that we hit the 20 minute mark on, on the closing statement. Probably well, this was a request. Of my, so. Because of my accounting story, did we even do that? Um, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the, with, the, with the closing statement other than it's accounting. So yeah, just um, guys, just make Mindset. sure you go over them. And, and, you know, title companies, your friend, they, they don't want to do a whole bunch of extra work, right? But it's, you got to get it right. So when you call them, just make sure that they're that they're helpful. They almost always are super helpful. Um, yeah. And then they can change it super easy. It's not a big deal. Just make sure it's right. And if you if you get to the title company and you're working with us and you can't get anywhere, then call us because because mm -hmm. we, will, we will definitely help you out. All right. Yep. That's right. And now's a great time. I mean, the interest rates are going up, guys. I think I just heard that they were going up another 500 basis points soon. So uh, if you want to lock in some less expensive money, now would be a good time to do that. And we got some fantastic deals the other day, Heather. Oh, my gosh. We have know, so much by the coming time this right airs, now. I'm not sure that um, there will be any. Uh, <laughs> But you might want to call in and check. We just got some brand new, um, brand new single families. And um, we just got some, some rehab single families both and uh, their the numbers look pretty good so anyway that's right call in email in uh, if you if you've never talked to us before if not just call who you're working with and until next time get out there and make something happen mm -hmm. this has been the get real podcast to subscribe and for more information including a list of all episodes go to get